Lee's defense. Was reached. That same April, the Boromay was rolled out. The new fighter. The preliminary design was finalized in 2018. In the following year, a critical design review... Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into a significant development in the Philippines Air Defense Program. The Philippine Air Force PAF, is currently considering two major proposals for its future fighter fleet. This includes upgrading their current F-A-50 Fighting Eagles and a potential deal for South Korea's latest fighter jet, the KF-21 Boromay. Let's break down what this could mean for the PAF's air defense capabilities. First up, let's talk about the F-A-50. Currently, the Philippine Air Force operates 12 F-A-50PH Fighting Eagles, but there's a proposal to not only upgrade these aircraft but also to acquire 12 additional F-A-50 Block 20 units. The F-A-50 is a light combat aircraft, LCA, highly regarded for its versatility and affordability. By upgrading the F-A-50PH to the Block 20 standard, the PAF will have better avionics, extended range and enhanced combat capabilities. These upgrades would align the F-A-50 fleet with modern combat requirements, allowing the PAF to remain competitive in both air defense and ground support roles. Now, here's where things get even more exciting. Kai, Korea Aerospace Industries, has also proposed the export of the KF-21 Boromay, South Korea's new multirole fighter, MRF. This jet is still under development but has already shown great promise. The proposal aims to fulfill the PAF's MRF acquisition phase 1, which has a budget of around 61.2 billion Philippine pesos, originally allocated for the acquisition of 12 to 14 Saab JAS-39 Gripen fighters. Interestingly, for that same budget, the Philippines could potentially acquire around 10 KF-21 Block 1 units. Block 1 is designed with full air-to-air -air capability, making it ideal for air defense and interdiction missions. However, its air-to-ground capabilities are still limited at this stage. Despite this, Block 1 offers an excellent opportunity for the PAF to start building proficiency with the KF-21 platform early on. You might wonder, why would the PAF opt for a fighter that's still in development? Well, there are several key benefits to getting the KF-21 Block 1 now. First, it allows the PAF to familiarize itself with the next-generation platform, which is critical as air warfare evolves. Starting with Block 1 means the PAF can immediately enhance its air defense capabilities, even though the fighter's air-to-ground capability won't be fully realized until Block 2 is introduced around 2028. Second, the South Korean government has expressed willingness to fully support the PAF in this acquisition, mitigating concerns about the platform being untested. The Philippines would likely receive the Block 2 upgrades almost simultaneously with the Republic of Korea Air Force, ensuring that they don't fall behind in capabilities. In addition to a proposal to export 12 new F-A-50 Block 20 Fighting Eagle LCAs and upgrade the PAF's current 12 F-A-50PH to a certain standard, Kai also made proposal to export the KF-21 Boromay for its MRF requirements. The proposal was said to be based on the PAF's current MRF acquisition phase 1 with a budget of around PHP 61.2 billion, which was originally based on Saab's offer to sell 12 to 14 new JAS-39C D Gripen fighters. Apparently 10 units of the KF-21 Block 1 including ILS can be acquired based on the MRF Phase 1's budget. Block 1 has full air-to-air -air capability, but limited air-to-ground capabilities, making it initially more suitable for air defense and air interdictions. Block 2 upgrades are scheduled to be introduced by 2028, and the PAF can get the Block 2 upgrades almost at the same time as the Republic of Korea Air Force, depending on agreements. Benefits of procuring the Block 1 despite not having full capability is for the PAF to start building its proficiency and familiarity with the type, and also immediately have improved air defense capabilities. The South Korean government is said to be willing to guarantee support for the PAF KF-21s as there are fears that the PAF might be investing in a relatively untested platform and development issues may affect the aircraft. Due to the admittance of the DND that funding is an issue in its quest to procure 40 new multirole fighters, the DND and PAF could be looking at the possibility of pushing through with the phase 1 of the MRF acquisition since the Philippine government can actually afford to procure them without the need for special funding arrangements. The DND and PAF can then look at phase 2 of the MRF program once the legal and financial frameworks are ready to support financing the program. One major challenge facing the PAF's modernization efforts is funding. The Department of National Defense DND, has acknowledged that securing financing for the long-term acquisition of 40 multirole fighters MRFs, is a significant hurdle. 
However, the good news is that the Philippine government can actually proceed with phase one of the MRF acquisition program, potentially with the KF-21 Borome, without the need for complex financing arrangements. This phase focuses on acquiring the initial batch of aircraft that fits within the existing budget. This makes it possible for the PAF to immediately bolster its air defense capabilities while preparing for future expansion in phase two of the MRF program. As the legal and financial frameworks become more stable, the PAF can then look at scaling up its MRF fleet in the coming years. What does this all mean for the Philippine Air Force? If they proceed with the KF-21, it could mark a significant leap in their air defense strategy. The F-A-50, while capable, is a light combat aircraft, useful in certain scenarios but limited in others. The KF-21, on the other hand, represents a multi-role capability that is more suited to modern threats. With a combination of F-A-50 upgrades and the introduction of the KF-21 Borome, the PAF would not only enhance its air defense but also increase its strategic flexibility. The Block 1 units can focus on air-to-air -air missions, while Block 2 would expand into more complex multi-role tasks, including ground strikes and advanced electronic warfare. In conclusion, the potential acquisition of both the upgraded F-A-50 and the KF-21 Borome could be a game-changer for the Philippine Air Force. Despite some challenges, including the development status of the KF-21 and funding limitations, these platforms offer a clear path forward for modernizing the PAF's capabilities. The strategic support from South Korea also adds a layer of security, ensuring that the Philippines won't be left behind in the region's evolving air defense landscape. If the PAF decides to move forward with these proposals, we could be witnessing a major shift in the balance of air power in Southeast Asia. Stay tuned as we continue to monitor this exciting development.